Antin Magnus and in this tutorial we will look at a slightly different approach to Yunichiro Horikawa's Kagome weaving tutorial. And we will start off simple by creating a very simple geometry which is easier for debugging, namely a polygon with a very low resolution. And the first thing we need is a dual mesh. So if you want to compare it to what we had before, a dual mesh is basically connecting the midpoints of the surrounding primitives of each point to these n-gons. So the next step would be something very similar, namely connecting the surrounding midpoints of the edges to triangles. And we can do this by creating an attribute wrangle, which is running over the points. And we create an array called NBS for neighbors and feed it with all the neighbors for each point. So on this geometry stream of this point. And then we can just use a for each loop, which is running through each neighbor in NBS. So what we'd like to know is the average position between the current point and its neighbor. So we just say average of point on the stream, its position neighbor. And also the current point position. And we would like to, I mean, we could now, of course, directly connect these midpoints, but their orientation or the orientation of the, those triangles is dependent on the winding order. And this shouldn't happen in a random fashion. So we will first of all feed all these positions into an array that starts off empty. And with the append function, we can just feed all those positions into our array. All right, now let's first just connect the points the way they are. And then we will do something about the ordering. So we say for each vector P in position, we would like to add a point on a primitive we have defined outside the loop. So we just say prim triangle and use the add prim function set to poly for polygon. This is a closed polygon in the end. And now we just define points int pt triangle will be created with add point zero at position p. Now, if we remove the existing points, we can see a little clearer what we've created so far. So let's create each point and its polygons. So let's just enable this. You see now we have on each edge a point. And in order to connect them, we will also add vertices using add vertex on the current geometry stream on the primitive triangle using the point triangle. So this connects our points to triangles. And as soon as we use a more complex example, we will see that in some cases, the primitive normals are flipped due to their winding order. So let's just take a test pick in its simplest form, remesh it. So we have triangles and feed this into the switch. Make sure to set it to one. So this will be our test object. You can see the dual mesh generation works fine. 
but the triangulation or excuse me the triangle generation is showing both directions on the surface which is not really good for our next step so we should just um, sort these points before we create those triangles so let's get back into our attribute wrangle and here what we need is additionally a direction so the vector direction will be the normalized position the normalized average position minus our current position of the current point and this direction should be rotated to, to the top so we can just set up a rotation matrix for that it's a matrix 3 called rot and there's a handy function called dihedral which is actually turning our current point normals in this case to an up vector so now when we apply the rotation to this direction you have to imagine that each point and its surrounding directions gets rotated so they are now uh, laying flat on the ground and now we can just use the Aten function on both vector components that are relevant namely x and z and this will give us an angle expressed from I think minus pi to positive pi and we can also append this to an array called angles now we are not really interested in the angles themselves but just their order let's just set up a float array called angles but what we're using these angles for is sorting so what we essentially want to sort is those positions so they are not mixed up when we generate our triangles and this can be done using arcsort this is a function that is taking in this case all our angles and it's just creating an order for them so our order array is not holding the angles themselves just but just integer values which give a certain order and we will use this ordering on our position array let me just create a new one which is called pos ordered and this will hold um, the ordered let's have a look it's um, maybe beneficial to just look at the documentation for a second and there's a nice example also how this is done so let's look into arc sword and down there you will see that you first set up an array called order ring where you can just sort certain um, arrays and then you have to use the reorder function on um, your array in my case pos and this should be based on our order array now what can we do with these ordered positions is just feed it here into our array so position ordered should be it and now all of these triangles um, look towards the outside so there are no flipped winding orders no flipped normals anymore now the last step let's just switch to our simpler example would be to take each edge and once lift the first point up and the second one down and then do it the other way around so we would put the first point down and the other one up 
So in the end, you have something like a cross here on each edge. So one line going from up down and the other one from down up. And we can create this by simply iterating over each primitive with a primitive wrangle. So just switch it to run over primitives. And now what we want to do is we want to know all its points. So I create an integer with PTS and we want to know the prim points on this geometry stream of our current primitive number. Now let's just run over these with a for loop. So for integer i zero, i smaller total, i plus plus. And we need to define total first. So this should be just the total number of points in our array. So we can say len PTS. And we want to do, um, basically, we want to have both point positions of the first and of the second. Then we move on and take this point and its yeah, following point and so on. So we can do it like this. We want to have the first position, position zero, using a point function, getting the position and we will use our PTS array, of course, because this knows the point numbers and run it over I. Then we just copy this line and create another position one. And this time we say I plus one. But in order to not overshoot, because there's only going to be three points and this could end up being point number four, we have to use the modulo function of the total number of points within the, this triangle. Now, we need some more information. What we also would like to know is the normals. So let's just say normal of zero, this is called n. We should possibly um, create an explicit point normal for this and call this nml1. So right after the triangles, let's make sure to fuse our new geometry and generate the bespoken normals. So like this. And I call this wrangle segments because this is what it's creating. Also, we would like to remove the primitives on this geometry stream based on the primitive number and the points should be gone too. And now I think it's time to create a primitive each time. So int prim segment and we create this with add prim on this geometry stream. This time it's just a polyline and it should use position zero and position one and we should add the normals to it, which is not going to work that way. What it wants or accepts is points. So PT zero and PT one. And these need to be created first. So let's just, to make this work, um, first of all, create an offset attribute or rather an offset value with channel float offset. We can create a nice slider. So this doesn't need to be really high. And now it's time to add this up. So let's just say vector pause PT zero should be position zero plus the normal 
of 0 0.0 multiplied by the offset same goes for position of 0.1 just make sure to replace all zeros in here and make the offset negative multiply it by minus 1.0 and then we can create our points based on position PT0 and position PT1. So int PT0 would be at point on this geometry at position of PT0. Let's copy this line again and repeat the same step for PT1. There you can see we are now controlling the creation of points and they are connected by or overcrossed if, if you like. So let's see whether this works. So now you see we have these kinds of connected lines and we can define their offset. All right, now these segments can be joined because at the moment these are separate lines and we would like to just use a poly spline node to make them, oh, excuse me, it's not a poly spline, it's a poly path node and this is now um, connecting all those lines to one so you just say connect endpoints and the situation should be now easier so we have far less primitives and these can also be resampled because you don't want this to remain that zigzag lines so the resample node has a nice function called subdivision curves and this is the place where we can really up the resolution quite a bit and also now this is getting rather exciting switch to a more complex geometry like this now what we'll end up with is a um, woven structure and we can now just feed this into a poly wire which will um, turn this into a more solid geometry make sure to make the radii rather small and we also need normals so the surface gets shaded properly now you can see that this all looks a bit sharp edged and it may get better by upping the divisions and setting the normals to something rather smooth a higher angle will also help here and to visualize those curves let me just correct the offset to visualize those curves we can also um, append random colors so you would just say right after having created those uh, curves you can just say I want a random color for each primitive but I want this based on points so just say V at CD for defining the color and randomize it based on at prim num so now all these get tinted and there should be oh it's just one line so this is interesting uh, if it's several then um, <clears throat> you would get random colors but that may depend on the subject 
Also, if you have some experience, bad experience with those spikes coming from the poly wire, you can still use the smooth note um, to a very low strength and it will get rid of those nasty spikes. Thank you for watching.